So that is our recording started here, and we're going to go ahead and try to go live on Facebook. I'm just going to jump in. I'm not going to do any sort, or uh, rather, on the on the live stream. I'm just going to initially start it. I'm not going to type in a, a summary or anything. We're just going to click it away. So we'll have to enter in all of our info later on. So for those of you assisting this live stream, please allow clean, clear connectivity. We're going to start with the old version of the live stream and we're going to pray that that works. And Okay, here we go. Crossing our fingers. I believe we have a healthy delay on the screen. Oh my lord. Okay, here we go. Okay. Yeah. It looks Perfect. like. We might have it working. It might be working. Wonderful. Hey. Did it work though? That is the question. It looks like it is. I'm just checking all of my screens and it looks like it instantly dropped on mine. If you can reload yours, let me know. Yeah, it, it's, it's on my screen. Okay, webinar is now streaming live on Facebook. That is a really, really good sign. Okay, so Let's go ahead and before we even get started, I'm gonna share this before anything crazy happens. Before they, before anybody gets shut down, we're gonna go ahead and share this. So for those of you guys, if anyone is here in the chat on the live, please do let us know if you can hear us. Let us know if there is audio. Um, if you didn't already notice, we had a little bit of a, uh, we had a little bit of an issue getting started. I don't know, you know, call it what you will. Um, but we appear to be operational. I'm just going to go ahead. You, you guys might even hear me on the screen for a moment in the background. Give me one what moment. Bit of it? There it is. And so let me click that off. Let me click over to Sean here. Looks like we are live. So let me, uh, yeah. And so you can hear me, right, Sean? Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Cool. Thank you for those of you guys that are joining us. Whoever is here, uh, whoever was able to, you know, like pull in here into this strange little corner of the universe, I believe it is May 24th, 2020. Um, if my targeting systems are correct, I think we landed uh, right about 3.30 p.m. here on the west coast of the United States. And we are, we, are, we are still in that third to fourth dimensional transitional phase of consciousness. And so I see a few people rolling in here. Hopefully our stream is still live. I'm going to count on everybody to let us know. If it is not, um, and yeah, let me go ahead and click over there. And so, yeah, first off, I want to start by just kind of welcoming Sean Bond. For those of you guys who have seen some of the live streams that I've done, or maybe even a few of the uh, the strange like conversations and whatnot uh, that we've done, some of the readings, you might have heard me mention Sean in the past. But um, what we're going to be doing today, hopefully, um, just a little bit of a talk, a little bit of a discussion about kind of the stuff that I've been seeing in the world and Sean's been seeing in the world. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, um, Sean played a really big part, I would say, in, in, in one of the most catalyzing stages of what I would call my early awakening process. Um, and part of the reason why I think it's really cool that we're going to be doing this video here today is because I think a lot of us as kind of like a collective are coming into these stages in which certain individuals, certain people, certain like relationships, certain friendships, certain alliances, a, 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 a network of synchronistically aligned key individuals are going to be entering the lives of each and every person that in my opinion walks this path of awakening 
or ascension. And for me, Sean was a very important person on that. And so Sean already knows I'm gonna, I am gonna be talking about him. So we got the awkwardness out of the way, but um, my, my experience with this whole multi-dimensional realm was an incredibly explosive, very fast, very bewildering process. Um, and right around 2016, through my own kind of self-work and some what was ultimately a very large crown chakra opening that occurred for me in 2015, um, I began to come in contact through my own, you know, kind of internal work with what I believe to be a multi-dimensional higher self council. And so what I mean by that is a, it's like a group of consciousnesses that each of us have existed as in this earth realm and whether it be past lives whether it be current lives whether it be you know future lives but around 2016 i began to come in contact with what i believed to be a future version of myself and some of you guys that have been following some of the stuff that's been going on in our world you've 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 probably heard of such a thing by now but um i sought sean's sean's help in I believe it was early 2016 with essentially integrating myself with what I understood to be a future version of me that was actually meant to guide or assist in the very important work that I'm doing. And so the reason why I'm going on and on about this, you guys, is because uh, the work that I did with Sean, I believe, was one of the touchstones or like the turning points in the experiences that I had in this journey, because in the years since, uh, I met him and a whole group of other people in this very kind of soul pod that we're all a part of. My life has utterly, utterly transformed. And so the reason why we're going on and on about this today is because I believe many of you that are here who may be watching this broadcast in whatever part of the world you are, you are among that group of people who chose to also go through this process. And so um, now that I've rambled on that long enough, uh, yeah, Sean, how are you doing? Thanks for hanging out today. What's what's happening in your world <laughs> um a lot uh this <laughs> it's, uh, as above so below so it's like all, all within we're all fighting or bringing to peace a fight that's going on in our disunity of our internal self that's reflecting in the external world and um all relays with uh, how we connect together in uh, the web of connectivity of our collective unconscious of our species and they're like showing wounds that come up daily that like give us opportunity to make dramatic heals and changes to our timeline and everything uh, in a, a wave of effects um, as we heal what we don't like in ourself and the world uh, that is a part of us and light up that part of being and uh, bring love to it and what it needs and I've <sighs> been doing a lot of that and magic and finding things that are like advantageous for the time and uh, chess moves that are being exposed uh, in by the dark and uh, unifying forces in the light and finding different uh, beings around uh, in some form of dormancy and then finding ways to bring them to unity and action and uh, a form of waking up an awakening energy in the different areas that I've been able to track it back. So I'm not going into that. Yeah. That also seems to be what wanted to be the topic of stopping us from talking from the AI. What was that? So what was the, so what was the reason why they wanted to stop us? Um, opening up awakening energy. Uh, so I was like, oh, this thing was meant to stop different forms of awakening, and I was trying to monitor things back forward in time. Okay, well, yeah. we're not totally, we're not totally going to do that now that that was uh, <laughs> the reason. Um, now we are. Yeah, yeah. How about, how about you? can even call that a timeline incursion, which is a little bit of a leading term for the moment. Um, for some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about in a moment. But for those of you guys that are that are kind of jumping in the room, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Um, what we encountered earlier on, what Sean is referencing, um, is we tried to go live on the stream like multiple, like probably five or six times in a row, like over and over and over again. Um, and it was right after a dis little bit of a discussion concerning, you know, what I believe to be, and I think, I think, I think Sean is also talking about in his own way, 
um, a bit of a, a timeline alteration or a changing or what we could even call like a momentum building process that's meant to pull large, we could say swaths of human consciousness, large groups of people um, toward what I believe um, is kind of an AI transhumanism timeline. And so I might have just kind of uh, already started in a weird direction. But before we go even further, could if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your recent work and just stuff that you're doing for the people that maybe follow some of the stuff that I've been doing. Um, some of them have heard of you, but yeah, tell us a little bit about like what you do. What's your occupation? What's your mission here in this strange realm at this stage? Wait, um, my public mission is to bring reminder to the potential that is within each of individuals in humanity and reminding them that they it's mostly all just remembering it's all inside you and that there's a super technology supercomputer quantum whatever you want to add to it in our body in our dna and hey you, you've got to do all these things to turn it on and repair it and otherwise it's paperweight and you can just like live that light if, if you want but it's not as fulfilling as I've found that this, uh, this type of one where you activate everything and go into more of your spirit and your truth and what you love to do and not be a slave. And, uh, you know, since, uh, <laughs> physical jobs and stuff are, uh, <laughs> being kind of forced right. away. Um, it seems more of a thing that will be, um, an open process for people to like, Oh, I have time now. What else am I going to do? Just Netflix and chill eight days in a row. Mm. Well, if you want to, but if you want to also make the timeline better and uh, make it so that you live in paradise and you're happy all the time and uh, things aren't falling apart around you and you got to live paycheck to paycheck. I mean, do whatever you want, but you know, yeah. this definitely helps uh, with what you want to do and just com combination with everything, any skill set, any job, any career, uh, knowing what you're doing, having ideas flow to you, having your f energy output, being in happiness, uh, finding your love, uh, exploring more, dreaming more, uh, imagination visions coming to you all the time just put that all on top of any uh type of uh career or life choice somebody has lived and it just makes it way better and it even attracts more uh people and events and all kinds of things that will come up that will take them to an even greater exploration which is fun huh. so that's what i do i'm kind of uh wizard but like i think everyone has like that archetypal aspect in them and they have to like sit with it and like go into their library and start like sifting through it i also teach the ability to read dna and um yeah, biophotonic emissions as a blueprint that comes up and then i go into stream read and i teach people how to do that and then it, they can form all their abilities that they've learned in the past and it's, it's quite fun and also past life recall and there's a lot of names for it. There's, there's endless names. I just reverse engineer abilities that um, I, I layer on top of each other and it, it, they expand and it, it comes off faster and faster and I, I download faster and faster. And it's, it's lovely. When did but, it uh, start? When did it's it definitely start not to just you? that. But you, so, Sorry so, to just like throw myself things. in there. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, boom. When did all this start for you? Like, when did you start like getting in touch with like whatever that like multidimensional aspect of yourself that like you're using when you're literally coding and reading somebody's structure of like their DNA strands? When did that like when did that whole thing start for you? Um, well, it's kind of been like uh, it expands and contracts like depending on the environmental allowance uh, into the kid age and. Uh, having it kind of shut down quite a bit, going through dreams and visitations and uh, talking to beings all the time. And, and like, then I share with people and they're like, oh, is that imaginary friend? It's like, okay. Um, so, and then getting out into high school, out of high school, then I, I just like 
as soon as I'm able to research whatever I want and my, my time learning isn't having this thing I don't like learning in front of it, uh, <laughs> like things I won't use in the waking world, um, then I, I, I love learning. I, I, I got rid of that wound that school does and then I got into the things that I love to do and you become a genius at that and as long as you go into things you love, it just builds and builds more things you love and you just expand love into everything because you know you make it yourself and you figure out how it triggers and it, it leads to truth and it, it tells you like you're doing the right thing in the right path and as you're flowing with it, it just builds, get faster and um, more resilient. Of course, there'll be struggles and those challenges, those challenges are part of the journey, the stepping stones, they get you stronger to go even faster. Um, I, I uh, also had like a lot of positive things uh, happen to me, mystical experiences, being show up, things talk to me, uh, things show up in dreams, been like taken off to another place for like years, it, like as if it, it's a dream and like, oh, that's an interesting dream I had. Um, yeah. <laughs> kind of blowing my mind how lucid it is. Um, and then... Uh, had like a bunch of temporal dilation um, or comp uh, t temporal compression of uh, experience, time, memory, awareness, learning um, condensed into uh, these moments in this direct yeah. timeline. So I've had a lot of that. I really and, feel uh, you on that, on like, like all like the so or, or rather, uh, it, what it feels, uh, what it feels like, is the experience to have a large amount of time packed within one small experiential moment, and all of the experience and the knowledge, and maybe also the trauma that has occurred with that, almost like big chunks of like another life will get downloaded into your body. And I don't know, maybe that's not even what you were talking about, but I was like, huh, that's what it feels like. Or rather, that's been an experience that I feel that I have also shared if that makes sense. <laughs> but, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, what uh, kind of things have you been experiencing in the weather of the unseen that goes along with these current events that are going on that thou shall not be named for thy censor? Right, right. right. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the negative keywords of, of the moment. Thank you. That's, that's actually a really good question. Also, part of the reason why we kind of wanted to do this, this, this sort of live stream or what I'm actually going to call a time stream. And as I'm talking, I'm going to click over and check out everybody on Facebook. We have multiple screens going here, you guys. So thanks for hanging out. We're also going to be doing some like Q&A. If you guys have any questions, um, and I'm just going to introduce the, the content, Sean, randomly. He didn't have any idea I was going to say this, but about like ascension symptoms, because over the past few days, there's been a lot of people, at least that I've been tracking and watching and talking to that are experiencing a great amount of pressurization in the body. So if you guys are hanging out here um, on this live stream, let us know about the ascension symptoms, what's happening in your body, if you have any questions about your expanding abilities. But... Um, from my own point of view, it appears as if uh, we are in what we would call a timeline overlay process. And for everyone that's wondering, what do I mean by this? Uh, one of the ways you can imagine it is sort of like someone trying to press a mold over your human body. But that mold doesn't really fit you. It kind of fits you. If you press it hard enough, you'll squeeze in there. And so on kind of a metaphorical level, I believe this is happening right now with sort of like our soul group, our, our people, you know, the us that are, you know, cognizant and aware of our souls here on the earth realm. And just so you guys know, that is not everyone. Not everyone <laughs> on this planet is even a real person. And Sean, we're going to comment on that later. Uh, but that said, I believe what's happening right now with the current, uh, well, we will, we will call it the viral madness and the new internet system. Everybody knows the two letters that go together that create that. Um, I believe what we're seeing right now is in timeline overlay process with respect to what is essentially an AI sentience trying to kind of reinsert itself back into our physical realm. You guys could imagine it kind of like a, like a being trying to reach his hand back over the cliff as he's falling, you know, you know uh, like one last tentacle kind of like reaches over and like grabs everything. And so I think we're sort of in a stage right now in which there, there's this increased frequency of really intense emotional interference. 
um, just really intense thought forms that are actually being broadcasted through our technology. And so from my point of view, the most recent kind of energetic stuff that I've been watching feels like we're being sort of corralled into this sort of timeline of fear and hypervigilance, um, which everybody's aware of. But the reason why I'm rambling on that, and hopefully this kind of segues into a little bit of a question for you, Sean, is because a big part of your work, and I think my work as well, has or involves what I believe to be at least the, the, the sort of fabric of time or the ways in which we as humans here still in the physical realm are interacting with that fabric of time. Because both of our work is kind of, you know, within that realm. And for some reason, my screen just clicked off. That was very random and weird. But because both of our work is within that realm, what is your process or like your technique for working with people's timelines? Or how do you, how do you view those things when you're working with timelines? And um, I realized that was kind of a huge like bucket of info. So take whatever you can. <laughs> you know? um, I, I get really uh, artful with it. Um, uh, so energetically expanding into uh, charging up and accumulating a bunch of energy, generating a bunch, and then sending it to uh, my pineal gland through like breath work and meditation to like stimulate daydreaming to the degree of HDness to where I can per, uh, project out in front of me uh, the person and then viewing uh, into their signature frequency the data that I'm allowed to look at. Um, going into their time streams of uh, timeline and uh, time tree and going back everything that like encompasses their entireness of each of their cells, zero points that come into existence and all their potentialities for every one of their expression fractaling up in kind of like a bunch of a luminescence, like color branching system that gives data and information. Uh, um, based on the color and the projecting to me and then I go in deeper to the different colors that attract my attention and then I read them um, and have them kind of translate into me as I uh, in my heart as I breathe uh, and then uh, I uh, kind of feel into them and translate what they need and their the interaction with causation and uh, why they are the way they are in incursions uh, uh, beings of uh, authority um, incurs don't usually have authority, so they steal it. So then it goes back to like uh, finding a resolution with something that's had its authority stolen and like a wound, because like barely anything has the ability to change timelines as it is seen as a big wound thing uh, after Atlantis, where a bunch of beings abused it and stole it. So she's like in a quarantining of abusers that, uh, so to use the ability, you have to protect it. And um, so like, as an example, uh, if somebody was getting uh, taken into a fear timeline of their actions and that go into a greater blanket of causation of the crowd uh, that the media is uh, perpetuating with the belief system war on what they believe is going on and then them uh, producing the manifest allowance of the effects um, that go along with that horrible, intelligent shutdown that comes with fear uh, and how it affects us on a greater reality. Um, it's kind of equated to if it's kind of hard to explain unless somebody was like t had their empathic abilities turned on uh, like over uh, expansiveness to feel into anything and then they're feeling overwhelmed and then going into fear and it was it was it would be like explaining how it's like shutting down all these systems. You're, you're losing all this memory of like all this way to empower yourself, all this kind of like background empowerment starts like depleting your ability to shine that out, push that out, feel into it, transmute it. And um, with each heartbeat uh, pushing out more and more out of your hologram as their imprints. Hmm. And uh, detachment from all those wound causers uh, that will be uh, the thing that comes into a person's timeline and uh, their quantum hologram that s perpetuates a program every once in a while that will continue until they give it focus and release it out of their system, whether it be a control chest move from another person or un unaware 
and they're just haunted or abusive or whatever. Um, Cause it can be many things in effect. It could be like them getting an emotion over and over and over again, or depression or mm. sadness or anger, or fear, or whatever, or mental thought or like stress, anxiety, and all these chess moves that like will form to amalgamate what they're carrying daily. And also while they're asleep, so there's, there's a lot to it, but um, hope that helped. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. That that's a lot. I think most of that I'm actually most of that I'm actually able to follow you on, especially with a respect to what I will call the sort of holographic m excuse me the holographic m printing process that I think a lot of us are doing right now. And if you guys are wondering, for those of you guys that are wondering, what am I meaning about that? And hopefully I'm following the content of what you're talking about, Sean. But I believe right now there's somewhat of a, we could even call it a holographic fourth density shared astral space. It's sort of like this sort of, uh, well, in my opinion, it's the, the uh, rooting of what we will call the social memory complex. Um, but right now what I believe is happening is a lot of us are sort of interacting, whether it's knowingly or unknowingly, sharing a bunch of energy within this shared astral space. And I believe there's this sort of holographic thought like creation process that each of us are doing every day on a constant basis that over the past few years has increased in frequency and capability. And we could even say uh, like specificity, like the RAM just went up to like this incredible amount of like gigabytes or whatever. And um, many people are not aware that our thoughts right now are literally creating reality on this crazy hyper expanded level. And so it sounds like at least within, you know, like what you're saying is your part of your method to either decoding or like creating or realigning a timeline has to do with at least, you know, through my understanding of what you're saying, working within that internal kind of holographic realm. Does that, does that like make any sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and truth and using that to like shine on the situation. Cause like, there's aspects of our energy and our higher self or multi-dimensional functions that depending on our layer of programming and our, our expansion and what we've set off to do in skills and accumulation, what it's done in the previously that we're willing to embrace and come into wholeness with and trust and monitor as it goes on in the background um, and take up each of those arms of ourself uh, as a multi-dimensional being to have that going on simultaneously while you're doing this, um, you can expand past any limitation that comes onto us uh, and go into that greater state we're all looking for that we've had usually, you know, um, and I'm also sensing some other stuff in the background. Like what kind of things did you want to talk about? Uh, and uh, if anyone else wants to talk about, please put in the chat. Oh, that's, uh, so thank you for things. noticing that literally right then I was actually looking at some of the questions. That was, that was, that was good. That was an interesting moment of like, like we kind of like sidelined on a little frequency there. That was cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I would, I, I, I like where you're going with respect to like the timeline, like creation process. There was kind of a concept that I want to touch on and there were, and then we are going to get to a comment from somebody here in a second. I think it was Roger up there asked about the Christ consciousness a little while ago. What's up, Roger? I don't know if you're still here, but good to see you. I want to get your opinion on, on something. And for some, sometimes when I think we, we, we sort of broach this subject, there are certain people in the 3D realm that can get a little bit offended or they get a little like, what, what do you mean? But I have this belief and an understanding of what I literally view right now in the eyes of the people in this world that I believe that many of the people we encounter in this realm are not actually real humans. And I don't mean like there's some like percentage of like, you know, it's, you know, obviously 50% people aren't real. But I think what we're encountering right now is a greatly expanded amount of these non playable characters that are meant to, you know, sure they're actual humans and they're living, you know, day-to-day -day lives, but their consciousness has been dulled to the extent that they are just on literal absolute autopilot. Um, and, you know, some of us out there will say, well, actually those are soulless beings and they're just physical like containers. And I believe those also exist, but what is your viewpoint on this sort of, you know, the, the, 
that whole idea. Do you think everyone's real? Are they clowns? I realize I just jumped off the deep end instantly. So lovely. Um, okay, so I'll I guess I'll answer either one, uh, and then both. Uh, but okay, so when I went looking into this subject a while ago, I I, I was hearing all the different things. Um, but I uh, want it. I'm now in the pr uh, perspective where I'm I'm tuning into everything myself and then comparing it. Um, so I was reading there was like twenty plus different types of concepts of um, what uh, a, a walking around sleep a sleep person or non-player character or AI uh, part of the matrix virus. Um, are incarnating multidimensional predators, uh, people that are so beautiful. Like I've mostly found that there's like a, a the, there's a balance to this interaction, and uh, the best way to do it is, which also leads in the next question, which is the Christ consciousness thing, uh, which is uh, the goal is to ev eventually everyone see themselves as everything, and uh, everyone is you, kind of like. Uh, oneness, healing in yourself, reflection, kind of awakening of yourself and to the rest of the collective unconsciousness cause and effect. And be that, be kind of everyone, uh, be the multiverse, be source in a body. Hmm. Uh, so in the goal of doing that in finding every what is everyone uh, a large percentage of people are people but what you know they're like a very abused uh very fractured like barely one percent of their spirit in a body remaining and the rest of them is like in some type of hold uh by the negative or uh dominating forces that are trying to control them as like a, a form of energy harvesting battery. And then uh, they've been just so abused so much that it hurts to wake up. And so they, they, they stay in, in that position um, until like enough time where there's a catalyst that wakes them up or like advanced chess moves. Cause each one of them are like a fractal of the universe. And as they wake up, they will resolve everything in their DNA lineage and, and everything continuing. So there's all these reasons, causation, and uh, what matters to it. Uh, and what is real in an example into the hologram is like this earth is its own hologram. And that like is multi-layered, multi-realmed and uh, a very advanced quantum computer game um thing that's going on that's a very advanced remedy system for the multiverse uh and a lot of high powered spirit both light dark and neutral here so uh and it's big quarantine fortress thing of like what incarnates here because of the amount of effect it has in the dna library and how we're super hybrid and a lot of things are trying to fight over us and also the earth uh so there's a lot of things going on with it but that uh, as a hologram within a solar hologram, which they have a little bit different types of quality hologram of light spectrum eminence than uh, the galaxy uh, in less, like each layer you make a new hologram, it gets less real kind of mm. concept. So like, and then, but each hologram has a realness type of energy that is what manifests, it, what, what continues through history and lasts throughout history anchored. And then the unrealness energy is the unpermeant of like unanchoredness to um, like being locked in time con concept mm. and, and reality function, reality warping, which is like the whole point of what reality warping is, is changing what is real. But uh, before I forget what, uh, yeah. yeah uh, yeah, go on. So yeah, real layers. There's a rare layer of real for each hologram, uh, planet, solar, galactic, universal, multiversal, extra multiversal, beyond space and time. Um, and each of those can be linked with in the hologram of their being as a multidimensional body function that you can interact with and get each layer up and running and stable and able to sustain itself and grow 
and then have that linked to this beam now and have them as a sensory observational effect in bringing more realness and causation to what you want manifest. Um, and there's definitely things of using real energy and unreal uh, energy and putting into things as a form of control and uh, releasing chess moves in time that are in the unseen as they are less anchor anchorable to continue a bubble moment and sub time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I, uh, quantum awakening to yeah, yeah. Segue that into the Christ, like into the Christ consciousness. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if I can find that question. Yeah, I think that was for Roger. Yeah, and we are also going to look at the comments. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. We have a number of us joined here over Facebook. Thanks for hanging out. Yes, we are actually going to get to your questions. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at some of those. Feel free if you have anything you want to say about that Christ consciousness or whatever Roger was talking about earlier. What's Sean's perspective on the idea of Christ consciousness and its relationship to quantum consciousness? Okay, so I surmise that quantum consciousness goes into with what he's saying that depend, and depending if he's getting it from um other sources that like have a definition what i'm like okay quantum quantum like uh energy particles of oneness and like the ability of all the forms of things that we observe in quantum physics at a macro scale um up up to affect uh in the ability of seeing yourself as every molecule, having them all unified as one. Uh, it's kind of, I'd say, I guess, quantum is like uniting your entire body in one and then having them, uh, you be the form of and state of being you're trying to do at any moment and add on to it and have it grow in density and quanta of different forms of energy built up and to last in an immortal state through time. Hmm. Qu Christ consciousness, very similar, uh, mostly based on my mystery school interaction with it, that's continuing it in, in, in it's like a big thing. Um, there's a lot of layers to that. It's big purity going back to your true being, your source deep within your heart, uh, going infinitely deeper and deeper, letting go of everything that is not the unified expression of all that is you in source merging with all yourselves, bringing them to an awareness, merging with your higher self, um, going back in time as its branch of source, merging with other branches of source that branch off from you. And uh, it's, it's like you're forming a collective of everything on the entire planet and bringing them to a community agreement of situational chess moves uh, and allowing the flowing of that magic and manifestation. Uh, and that goal of that is you become at peace with even your greatest enemies if you're able to feel love for even your greatest en enemies and inside yourself, the reflection of them, you are doing very good at that um, and ma uh, maintaining structure of mm -hmm. like seeing everyone as one because it's totally like this thing that just creeps in especially when we wake up uh that like oh forget that you are everything mm -hmm. be like in the egoic mind get angry at the you know but okay. like they're of course people should be angry now because like the shit that i mean righteous anger is absolutely necessary for incre uh, increasing action if you have it in you uh, it's being built up in pressure until you do some type of action that brings it into empowerment focus. Ask what it wants to become. Ask what it benefits you and the earth and planet. If you're only able to do psionic work, it's fine. See if you can give it love, like you're opening it up out of your liver or whatever heart place it's in. And like you're freeing it out of the box with love, combining love with righteous anger. And it will be able to kind of uh it's kind of like tough love but like form of love that brings somebody into action mm -hmm. kind of actionable love is what you're transmuting into and then 
that will be like an astral extension of you, like a ghost that will, you send out to do shit and make things happen based on what it's angry about, whether it be like a form of mental, emotional uh, matrix, imprisonment, energetically, whatever, uh, of like limitation, being, you can bust out of it. Like a lot of things in anger are like freedom or like taking away, you know, that. And uh, yeah, yeah, you can true. energetically bust through all that and it'll affect things. Wow. How are you? Um, it, I'm still, I'm still Goodbye. like unpacking stuff stuff that you were saying like 20 seconds ago so hold on i'm almost i'm like almost like caught up and boom um no i'm just kidding but no 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 thank you i when i will attempt in to to kind of answer in my sort of over simplistic way what what i believe or what i felt from like your commentary on that and for me, you guys, for some of you guys that are watching, you're going to be like, oh my God, here he goes within the energetic anatomy again. But for some reason, it allows me to understand what I perceive to be the inner workings of whatever this sort of ascension process, or whether it be a quantum consciousness or a Christ consciousness, or what is essentially this sort of movement based on the soul choice that we're kind of making right now as we enter fourth density. But where I view that process or the way that I work with it in my own way is oftentimes, like I just said, anatomically. And so what sort of vibrates for me as you're talking is a couple different areas in the body. Number one, for those of you guys that are experiencing a difficulty with sending or like receiving or experiencing, you know, whatever that heart chakra energy is, which for a lot of us right now is very, very strong. And like Sean was just saying, it's very pressurized. I think this is one of the areas where a lot of people are experiencing that pressurization. And so um, for me right now, it's about opening up specific structures. You mentioned that liver and I myself have a tremendous amount of liver energy in my own life, but I find that those people that are having a hard time, like connecting with, you know, whatever that guidance is or that multi-dimensional kind of stream, which, which, with which for those of you guys that are watching, Sean is an excellent, excellent, like contact with, I'm so like impressed, like, with the manner with which you're able to like weave those streams. But for a lot of us, myself included, we're, we're like working through these filters and sort of bubbles of emotional energy and those sort of wounds. And for a lot of us, it's like the liver energy. It will mix with this weird sort of turbine that hangs out in the center of the body known as our solar plexus. And one of the things that happens, and I realize I'm already kind of branching off a bit away from what you're saying, but what, from my point of view, one of the things that's happening as we reach this whatever sort of like collective Christ consciousness frequency, as we're moving up into what is essentially this sort of heart chamber right here, a lot of us have a lot of spleen energy blocking it. We have a lot of liver energy blocking it and we get caught. And then once again, I'm also talking about myself, you guys, we get caught up in these sort of internal processes or that pressurization. Um, and so I guess to really answer the simplicity of the question, I always thought Christ consciousness and quantum consciousness were sort of one in the same. However, um, I also think I tend to oversimplify many things. And so um, maybe that's a really roundabout way of saying, you guys, I think it, on like a collective level, the Christ consciousness activates as we re reach this, this sort of uh, heart or rather the, the green ray activation that I'm hoping we're all heading for, but I can already feel myself rambling on that as well. I hope some of that makes sense, Sean. Um, yeah, exactly, I agree. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, green ray. It's a good example of light creation and shining that from the lantern at full blast until you bust through the lantern or anything that keeps the light from reaching all the, you know, past the zero point, past the cell, your wall and the, the DNA going, um, permeating into the, all the cells and like a, your own formed hologram matrix of light, uh, flushing out all the external stuff uh, as you transmute. I actually like feel it as we're talking. That's why I'm doing that. I'm like, whoa, okay, cool. That, yeah, that's like, that's totally a thing. But, yeah, um, and, exactly. And using each tool for what, um, is the best for the time and your intuition will flow into it like uh, the five elements of transmutation as an example and like asking what the th things that are coming up on the dashboard one at a time are 
figuring out what kind of motion, mind, and giving them focus, grabbing onto them with your emotional hands and uh, giving them love is like an easy way to do it because it like contains all the frequencies, but you can also pinpoint it to like, oh, what do you exactly need? And then what do you want to become? And then it can be transformed into a benefit, beneficial thing. There's a lot of suppressions on us, uh, limitations programs we inherited. <clears throat> it's like, you know, being a, a wit, psionically activating race. So yeah. uh, a lot of things don't want it. Uh, but that uh, just as like the egg um, shell is a strengthener for uh, the chicken that gets out, um, it's going to mm -hmm. make us even stronger uh, than what we'd be. Of course, it's, you know, if people ignore because like that thing there's like catch those catchphrases like oh ignorance is bliss it's not it's suffering it's mm -hmm. huge suffering late you might kick things down the can because you're like looking at because you have the ability to control things as a human and you can go watch tv and stuff but it's it's gonna build up and eventually gets in your face and you can't keep just moving away from your problems but and then as you, you see them as like the obstacle that makes you stronger and you, you, you do something to shift it and turn it that lemon into lemonade, it, it becomes like everything working for you. You start seeing everything that comes to you as like a challenge or a test or uh, like a great advancement opportunity or like some, something that like, e even if it's like something you're like, why the heck would this be happening to me? Why does this guy show up? He, he's not doing anything for me. It's like, mm -hmm. well, if you read the spirit of that, like there'll be like reasons why that person's attracted to you or the, the meeting up or like karmic interaction or a remedy of like a, a thing. Some people could be completely unaware and they'd be like flag holders for soul families that, uh, yes. that have a whole group that transmute with them. And as soon as they transmute all their war internally in their universe into peace and come to peace with everything in their universe, that's mm -hmm. also reflecting back to them that, that bring that whole uh, soul family peace, which might affect entire uh, section mm -hmm. sections and of the universe. Those people, sorry to just throw that in there. I absolutely identify with that. I've actually noticed um, how my entire sort of family or just the flow and the energy and like the relational kind of balance has shifted throughout my life as I've worked through, through certain things. I've even literally watched how they've vanished and also how they've come back for other people. And so, I don't know, just to kind of like jump in on that in the last second, I definitely feel you. There, were, there was also like a question here that somebody asked you a little while ago. And yes, you guys, we're just rambling on about all kinds of stuff. But uh, I believe it was Pat uh, Patricia Genevere asked a little while ago. She says, Sean, I have also studied Buddhism. And they also speak of being one with everything without judgment, basically, because we are all one. Is that basically what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Like a fractal deep with inside you. Of uh, There's like different things people call it. But um, I see the, the source of an eminence of light, of consciousness, of energy, of everything, the source within everything that's deep within your heart that kind of goes down infinitely. That's kind of like beyond space and time because everything in distance, even uh, like the space between planets, if you were kind of like uh, see see your eye like expand and contract, like to be able to where you can go up to the infinite level of all planets in the multiverse and universe and then fractal down to be able to observe the space between atoms uh, and then see it all as kind of like a spectrum of con interconnectivity with a purpose. Um, and you feel into that flow more and more as you open yourself up. But like, because this, you got to have safety and uh, confidence into your protection and ability to stop separation consciousness, um, dominating, controlling consciousness that forgot that it was everything that wants to create a, whole, a different play within a play already existing mm -hmm. um, to, uh, to, to separate, uh, to detach. That's the process of detachment, detaching from separation consciousness. The, the beings that have forgotten that, that are in like, you know, negative influence and interaction, even if they don't want onto or actively controlling it. Like if their shadow is out of control, people detaching with love 
as that compresses out of your field and you take your hologram and are able to go to the where you're the only one programming for your bubble of gravity, your body, all that into the deep center of like, again, you can detach from the separation conscious illusion, Maya ego, um, uh, and suffering karma and all that and going into the center um, of yourself deep within that is connected to unity, conscious love, everything, oneness in that collective of all the love users, the, the beings that won't harm you, that you can go into trust because they are you and it's like self-defeating and it's like there's a sensory layer of separation that because there's need for separation and that remedy that eventual quarantine collapse of um big dramas and uh darkness transmuting into its positive expression hmm. and uh the balance between that like th where they learn from each other and yeah it uh so a lot of it's like letting go and embracing your 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 thing the thing deep within you that i am the and even layers deeper than that i feel you thank you I, i'm also going to segue instantly into the next question that i wanted to kind of just jump into because i noticed it as you were talking here i'm going to kind of answer this one first and then i'm gonna i'm gonna go for it and this is from this is from kim kim warner so thanks for hanging out i don't know if you're still here but uh, she wants to know how how do best balance ourselves at this pivotal time with wanting the timeline to go in the best direction while taking in the information unfolding in front of us in 3D that looks horrible. Uh, thank you, Kim. And I agree, a lot of it does look horrible in 3D. And yet at the same time, I truly, truly believe that this is the most absolutely amazing time we could have chosen to be alive. Why is that? I think, you know, number one, because we chose to be here for this strange ascension process. But number two, I think that our internal focus right now, that sort of holographic realm that Sean is talking about, that sort of internally, uh, that sort of internal creative space that each of us is dealing with, where that sort of, that other version of you lives and those tapes and those scenes that are kind of running around inside your body. Um, I believe that the way that we take control, at least from an internal perspective, is by really number one, you know, starting to turn down the noise in the body and like, you know, focusing our energy differently and understanding that our thoughts are literally creating our like reality at this stage. But at the same time, we are also being greatly, greatly affected by a number of like frequency interference, uh, literal technology, um, actual sentient beings existing on the fourth dimensional plane that are also trying to stop that process. But I would say to answer Kim, and then I'm going to hand it over to you, John, um, how the way that I was taught to balance and direct that energy was by really purifying, number one, the physical body, heavy metal detox, um, learning how to get in control of, you know, what was going on inside me. For me, that was Qigong, that was learning an energy clearing like modality. But for everyone out there, it's a little bit different. Um, and I realize I'm rambling on that, but what I'm getting to, I guess, for Kim is knowledge of self and really what's going on with you and why you're here. And especially like, what is our biases and what's our focus and what are we creating in our inner world? And so, you know, now that I just ran it on that for a moment, Sean, what do you think? How do we best direct that sort of time stream, if that makes sense? Um... It's a really good question. I like the oh, use of the words in it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I love the all kinds of it. Oh, and what you're going into the I'm reminding myself of a question. Oh, three D. Yeah, it looks horrible, right? Um, hmm. Yeah, I was like noticing in in the unseen, and if you're wanting to know a little bit, kind of thing about why all this is going on, there's many mm -hmm. concepts because it's been on the chessboard as, or in the poker game as one of the cards that they can play as like a, a thing, the, more so the dark, because, it, um, you know, like why would we want a virus? Why would we want quarantine? Why would we want our rights taken away? Uh, but, you know, uh, that's in, uh, reaction to a predictive model that they recently got 
and that they have to act fast or they lose very quickly. And even so, they're still losing because they're losing grip on what they would have wanted in the projected timeline. So it's way better timeline. Um, there's like projections of timelines where the virus wasn't released in China, it was released in the US. And mm -hmm. that was a horrible timeline. <laughs> like, you know, and, and like more, more things went down and there's all these different timelines. So, uh, 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 choice actions that happened that made it way better than it need, uh, would have been way less death. Uh, it's more, this event is being allowed as a way to spark more of that make or break moments so that people get up out of their slumber more awakening uh, catalysts from the light, but they're also focusing on ways to like bring out truth and shine that more as well. Uh, so it's like a needed thing because the goal isn't to save humanity. It's get them to unite and save themselves mm -hmm. uh, and get their power back, which is like them taking all this energy and parts of themselves that they've been gr uh, meat grinded into like where they're barely like 1% of their entire self and then just take all that back, uh, integrate it to fullness so that they can hold up the huge weight that they were holding before from all their experiential interactions of from other planets and all the things they've ever learned that they're trying to bring here that would love be wonderful if it was set up and would help all this this interaction it's like everyone that's healing thank you i love you thank you so much for healing um yeah oh yeah and then there's like this thing where we went through a huge spiritual quarantine that took a, a quarantine a whole bunch of source problem uh fractals of source that got corrupted in like antithesis to source expression mm -hmm. and like unbalanced state of even that into evil uh where it, it like it's doing a bunch of negative chess moves it's not allowed to do and then it mm -hmm. also getting corn to here as well uh, as uh, different layers of hell realms um another universe even uncreated and going into that mm -hmm. void space um the comet that is passing right over us like yeah. a little bit uh like yesterday atlas um that is a comment that's like it is an ancient founder technology that mm -hmm. goes in it has, it has on it has a bunch of things that also connects to realms having to do with the planet used to be sending out a frequency right like it's sending out like a recording or something as well i don't know that's just yeah it has libraries it's got a lot uh, it's got some other crystalline stuff it its biggest form of technology it has the ability to eject players from the game that are abusing it and uh it's a really powerful one and like it, they tried to blow it up oh well, some some faction it did uh and <laughs> And uh, that only made it made more of it, and some of the pieces went to Earth. So now their permanent Earth is permanently getting audited. Good job. Uh, it's a it's a, actually a good chess move. Um, huh. And there there's some like Ly Lyran um, interaction with the the. It's, it's they're not physically interacting with it, but spiritually. In mm -hmm. other di dimensions, uh, like not in 3D. Um, yeah. And there's like a management with like temporal observance for the solar system. It's currently limited in its field and is wanting to trade with people in a field. And so it has advanced technology and you can send a list of beings that are messing with you to it. And it will eventually- How, how uh, do we send that list? <laughs> Uh, you you uh you can see the uh oh your higher self has a list uh it's been observing everything that's fucking with you and it can look for beings that are doing things that are to the level of cheating uh where it requires a, a ejection and you can uh see that in a message box have a send button that uh links to their signature frequency it's the signature frequency of the Atlas asteroid. There's pictures of it. And also I believe it's a fracture of Maldek, uh, the mm. planet that was the asteroid belt. It, what, yeah. you don't, it can be other names. That's what people are calling it now. Um, that is closest in the Mars and Jupiter. And um, yeah, it has a lot of connection to that and empowerment and uh, a realm 
connection and dr things you can interact with dreams and there's a mystery school that each of the asteroids has all this cool stuff on it that people can go it's like extra credit um mystery schools i really appreciate you saying that uh because i this has been kind of a thing that i have been looking at and thinking about and kind of analyzing and from my own point of view, when I first encountered what I believe to be the frequency of Alice or whatever the, the, and I believe actually there's several others that no one is even talking about that are just outside of our visible, visible space. I don't know if you've like to perceive anything like that, but in my opinion, I believe it's traveling as part of a group. Um, and so it's really yes. cool to hear you talk about this because it's one of those things where I'm like, you know, I have this feeling there's this thing and I haven't heard anyone talking about it, but from my point of view or the way that I perceive things seems to be in this weird like radio frequency internal like metaphorical realm and what I encountered upon looking at the image of what I believe to be Atlas which was about two weeks or so is it feels as if there was like a pre-recorded somewhat of what we would call an astral tape or a, almost a like a a video that also has an experience or an emotion that will be wrapped up in it. If I had to guess, it feels like it has some sort of a vibratory quality for people that are able to receive it and it continues an unlocking process. Now, it's cool to hear you say who and what it was tied into because for some reason in my mind, and you know, I could be totally wrong, but it felt like there was uh, like a, uh, well, I can't even say the word, Pleiadian frequency also like related to it but i have no evidence for that it was literally just me going ha huh, i feel like uh, is this sounds like feels like uh, i think it's this thing um but it's very very cool to hear you say that um and so yeah yeah thank you i just wanted to throw that in there uh, you're 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 viewing a lot and like yeah the, the common technology their their circulation their um rotation the all, all the spectrum the colors all these things and when i say mystery school i mean like and uh, if you were to yeah, imagine very, spirits really coming together good. yeah here, go ahead go ahead if you imagine spirits come together and be like hey we need a we got a lot of mad information here uh, it's good stuff uh how do we and a lot of people want it like how do we and then they form a uh, school and then they continue that no matter what because like there's things past death and like into the in, the mortal soul concept and beings that don't even want to incarnate physically that like continue as guides and ancestors that will sometimes if they're really advanced um yeah be able to actually appear to you and talk to you um and uh and even if they can or it's hard because of clear audience blocks that people have and they can go even deeper into trance state and consciousness and uh, forms of meeting them and journeying and uh, whatever it takes and it will start opening up more. Um, if I may just really, really quickly, because there's a bunch of people that are watching this. For, for those of you guys that are watching, when people talk about this idea of a mystery school, because right now there's a lot of people selling like mystery school, come to this mystery school, come to this thing. What they are actually talking about everyone is an internally guided astral experience that takes place within you, inside you. Number one, for a lot of people, it'll happen when you're dreaming or it'll take place through downloads and files that are kind of experientially, you know, uh, that we that will sort of unlock themselves throughout our experience. Must, much of what people talk about, because this was a thing that I didn't understand. When I first started hearing about this, I was like, what? I want to. I want to go to a mystery school. Where do I, where do I sign up? How do I get there? Nobody told me where it was. And, you know, to me, and for some of you out there, they're like, ha ha ha, obviously, Matthew, we know. But for me, I was one of those people that didn't understand that concept. And I was already going through this process of being guided and walked through these protocols and these introductions with physical people in the world that were teaching me things as well through experiences and the unlocking of myself. And so I just think it's important to mention it because Sean, you also ex explain this as well in a different form. When you guys hear about this concept of mystery schools, it is not a product that you pay for online that you will go to, okay? This is not, this is internally guided process of awakening and it's sort of like a development of additional versions of yourself. And every once in a while there will be alignments. There will, in this case, there could be a comment or other other events in our lives that will unlock those processes. And so I hope that made sense, Sean. I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, for those of you guys who are trying to figure it out, that's what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, like as above, so below, uh, 
and uh, like people can go to these mystery schools and a uh, dream astral vision a mental there there's different layers that you can connect your sensory data to to where it like comes automatically in daydream uh or imagination and you don't have to create anything if it's going like that then uh and you're getting information and knowledge and it's helpful and it, it like continues down a path and yeah that's what that is but um anyway uh or whatever people get taught in a way there's like different tutorship programs depending on uh, the spirit involved and then their ability to communicate it and translate it um more into this cause and effect uh for the planet like big solar source quarantine quarantining a bunch of source problems down to the the earth because she's like root chakra of resolution for the multiverse um compress and become resolved uh res resilient and resolve everything in like one place kind of thing she's got going on she's very good at it um thing happened where we we're resolving atlanta stuff because it's kind of like a trying to play a, a reoccurring theme scenario and getting people go through a, another scenario of waking up past catalyst points of domination and becoming resilient and strong in our free will despite the incurring forces uh while quarantining down these problems uh we had uh like before the quarantine like 50 percent resolving of the atlantis dramas now it's like a whole bunch of stuff is just dumped on our lap and it, so like a lot of predators were here and so a lot of people were like forced to face their shadow very quickly and uh it's interesting how it formed into the as above so below quarantine for this one um that one's kind of in its end phases uh down to the the solar system and planet um and it's got a, a lot of things with like the different dramas of the planets trading what they have back and forth and resolving their stuff that they've compressed in their reality bubbles and realms and hell realms and other mm. states to find who's the the offenders like a lot of the beings that stole our stuff wounded us and the planet and tried to leave were brought back and now they're singing uh some of them are singing like canaries some of them are uh um, surrendering some of them are um fighting till they can't move and you know, whatever we're all stuck uh, together in the moment right yeah exactly i have a i just want to insert a little bit of a question really really quickly here because this was a really good one this is from mike patterson and i'm going to address it very very briefly and then i'm going to give it to sean because uh Actually, Sean, I believe that was one of my experiences with you, actually, in the initial session that we did. And so Mike Patterson asked, uh, actually, here, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Where is it? What kind of events or what can you do to unlock a mystery school or the quote unquote experience of what occurs within what we understand to be the mystery school? Um, in my opinion, and I'm just going to say this, Mike, if you're watching, I believe that is already one of the hallmarks of your experience and your process here in this body. The fact that I think you are aware of it, the fact that you are unlocking your own abilities, your own multidimensional intuitive abilities. And just because I have some knowledge of you and like what you're doing, you are a living example of the physical development of the internal educational process of what I call mystery school integration or education. Um, and so I believe that just through your own self work, your awareness of it and the, the, uh, desire to be more or to develop into that previous or you know other timeline version of yourself in my opinion Mike that begins to open the doors but the reason why I'm going on about this is because Sean one of my experiences with you was literally like oh yeah you have this like mystery school initiation process that you know like you're going through and you like you went on this whole rant about it and I was like what okay cool cool and it was wild because after that initial session it was like that sort of or rather what I will call a pineal burst in my head sort of took place and for those of you guys that hear this you're wondering what's he talking about it's a, a, a temporarily expanded experience in your head in your internal realm in which that place becomes like a movie a incredibly vivid internal experience and so what i understood was that for me that sort of doorway 
or one of those doorways to allow the, in, the integration of that process came about through my work with you, but really also just through self-knowledge and healing. And so I rambled on that a little bit. What's your viewpoint? How do, how do people initiate that? Um, uh, let's see. I mean, like you can investigate as well in the physical. There's like books on it, uh, all kinds of surviving mystery schools. Every every thing that it's called mystery school because it's being made in the moment, and a lot of things are left to mystery and great mystery. And there's like the concepts of um, um, HR. What is it? Um, Blavatsky and. Uh, some other uh, schools mm -hmm. of magics. Um, Theosophical even, society. Yeah, all religions are mystery schools. So like, it's like whatever. Uh, all, all these things that branch out, some good, positive, negative. There's all, all these truth nuggets that have to be there, that allowing it to continue in the future. Otherwise, it collapses. And as we merge them together and release the thing that separates them all from coming to unity, it like com becomes more true. Um, but besides that, uh, in in your internal school, a lot of people already have it going on in some way in unawareness. Thoughts come into your mind, awarenesses, inspirations, dreams, all this kind of stuff comes in. A lot of it has origins in things of causation where you've either learned it before and it's downloading and lo uh, loading up into mental form or triggered externally. Um, as long as you have like that key to that door of knowledge to the concept of it, you can open up from the basics and just have it flow in as you, you create a meditation of knowingness cultivation and uh, a field of uh, like you're surrounding yourself in the library of everything you are and have recorded in your life and light from past lives uh, in your, held in with magnetized wormholes in your DNA. Uh, your heart is the ultimate translator. So a lot of it's going to come out through emotion. So you opening up the emotional body to feel more by releasing everything within it. That's like, um, overwhelming it, such as trapped emotions, uh, get it, bring it to center point, clarity, uh, unfoldment, outpour, a very energetic state with your electromagnetic field, breath work, uh, getting you into uh, deeper states of consciousness out of beta fight or flight. Uh, into alpha or theta, uh, hemisphink of the uh, hemisphink, uh, blah, 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 blah. hemisphere sphink, uh, sinking of the brain, mm -hmm. and uh, and then connection with the heart. Um, mm, super consciousness of the heart connected to uh, and flowing data into the body and the center point in the gut of the subconsciousness. And that coming into the consciousness and unfolding all that awareness of what you've recorded. The super consciousness will hold data from your source, your higher self, your infinite fetus that's recorded everything that's happened to you. Mm. And Earth, can, you can do a uniting with. Uh, you, you have, uh, she also helps you, uh, source and Earth will help you connect to the Akashic Records, just, just like a base field. If you were to look at it as a library of energy that records everything that's ever happened in a given space, as if it's residual frequency and memory that permeates into the future and, and uh, also potentials uh, are recorded. Every one of the potentials, that doesn't mean that if you read the Kashik record, you're going to be really good at reading the future. Right. There's more skills added on otherwise. It's like you're reading the potential, the main potential at the moment, usually. Mm -hmm. There's usually but, way, way more above and beyond and around that. At least that's been my understanding. It's like reading one line of a really huge page. We're like, well, down here, yeah. this thing happens. You're like, well, but there's this whole other chapter and all this stuff up here. And it's like, they're all equally viable. And I don't know, that's been kind of my perceptual experience with what I understand to be Akashic Records. Um, but yeah. Very, very interesting. I think there was a couple other questions here. If you want to do a couple more of those before yeah, we roll sure. out of here, you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Let's just I like see. the a number of people watching 33. Nice. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Chris, how's it going? I see you down there. I always want to try to pronounce your last name, but it is good to see you once again, my friend. Hello, Echo Brook as well. 
Hogwarts. I will. I'm going to mention that. Danny Souza said that word really quick. I'm going to do a moment of shameless self uh, promotion, you guys. There is a very, very similar, or very, very, uh, what I would call a Hogwarts like experience coming up for you guys August 6th through 14th in uh, Rama, New Mexico. I'm going to be doing a uh, sort of a light worker, light warrior training protocol out there, you guys. We'll talk about that later, but. That is a real experience that some people can have in the physical realm, everybody. And so uh, just real quickly down here at the bottom, Catherine Realmudo says, and Sean, go ahead. We're going to give this one to you. How do you protect yourself while doing this work? You go ahead and then I will comment on that. Because that's a really big one. People are always like, how do you stop, you know, like whatever it is that you're clearing from affecting you? Um, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, every opportunity of a challenge that comes up is like a big tidal wave and you got a surfboard and hey, like, are you going to let it hit you and thrash you over because there's no way to avoid it? Or are you going to somehow get into a position where you can ride its ass and then it, it propel you to this grand adventure of like you seeing it not a, as like this enemy, this thing ultimately it is you it's just really detached separation consciousness and it's forgotten you know even if it's a really old or like from this way ancient universe or multiverse whatever of separation from you there's still mm. that tree that goes back that like goes to where those two connect and you can go to a, a state of being where you are that that connection and then bring ultimate peace to it by seeing it as yourself and you're giving it what it needs and love. Love will transmute anything. And it's like you being able to feel into the, the situation gives you ability to have responsibility, which comes with the power of like being able to bring that uh, fractal source by it entering your game. Anything that enters your game, uh, it's trying to program you um, it, and change things and challenge and all that. So it's also agreeing to your rules. So you, uh, depending on how it's doing that too, if it's pretending to be you or it's just incurring whatever, um, you can get to apply that. And then while you're healing yourself, you bring it to its healing and then its motivation and get the core of its motivation. That's why it's attacking, why it's in drama with you and interview it and have it, the information outflow of your heart as you shine truth it will show more of the greater picture of what's going on behind the veils of uh, you know, fear and uh, things that will be project projected at you to disempower you and forget uh, all the power you have within. Remember you are everything, uh, your love power and um, power in general. Um, what is power? Uh, a lot of dark people have a very one-sided view of what power is. It's how powerful would all the dark people in the world be if they were alone? Um, there's almost zero effect it would have in helping their reality. If, cause like, you know, if it's in a dark expression, they're not earning it. So they're stealing it from other people. And also people that have power or in this day and world that have are expressing in a way where they have to have it over people or uh, in scarcity where people don't have it. And that is a dynamic that isn't sourced in themselves and the unity of uh, what real power is, which it would be into. If you started to connect all these lights on the globe in like your fractal of yourself, uh, where they're all coming to peace, all unity, all um, discussing things on how things will flow and go and bringing harmony to the flow of how change and cause and effect go to where you start resolving issues and problems infinitely fast. Uh, there's a lot of big problems that um, we should get past, oh, we need to resolve it ourselves. it's our challenge kind of thing get into like, oh, you can do that. At the same time, you it's also part of your growth, growth process to merge in wholeness um, and resolve big, prob big problems even faster when you're in unity with everything 
while also like getting your higher self to learn every in and out of it so that it can eventually be able to hold up the same type of thing itself without not being the goal because there's infinite distractions that want to take us down. Oh, look at this little finite detail and or whatever uh, to get us, you know, it's a time game. The time is precious here and what we can do that will have an overall effect in the multiplayer hologram and shareable content that lasts and isn't um, thrown out or disagreed upon because it didn't take in the full perspective of everyone. Oh, thank you. That helps. Oh, so it, it, it sounds like overall, just so I'm understanding, self-awareness coming coming to peace or acceptance or healing with whatever that fractured sense of self that we're all dealing with. At least those are some of the elements that I'm, that I am taking with those. And then, you know, creating new agreements or ultimately like altering and changing the rules of your own internal game. At least that's, at least that's uh, what I got from that to kind of, to kind of, yeah, to kind of answer that from my own, uh, point of view really really quickly for Ellen and that was Catherine Real Mudo. Um in my own work, at least I I believe it was. I thought it was. Hopefully I didn't get your name wrong. But um for me the way that I have been able to what I believe uh you know block or sort of mitigate or just you know stop interference. Um for me I think that process started with self knowledge and this is just my own kind of path and like my own work and I think, I, you know, while, while some of us will experience this on a more multidimensional level in the very, very, you know, start of this work, I was incredibly affected emotionally. And so for me, um, I found out that I needed to really, really boldly work with those like emotional triggers, my emotional biases, whatever the pressurized elements of the negative emotion or the negative energy that I had in my body, I believe to be, and this is also what I see with clients, I'm sure you see it as well, Sean, um, in which to me, that is the ultimate bait signal or the, the that little grabbing on point or whatever they sort of reach into, whether it be our own blockage or something that's you know placed around us. Um, I believe our negative emotion, at least in Matthew's body, I think is the primary sort of uh, attractor for negative energetic manifestation. So for me, it's been about emotional healing, self-knowledge. Um, but then also there was this stage in which I really had to adopt what I believe to be this warrior-like attitude. And I had to, you know, understand that I was no longer at the mercy of these things. And that just by gaining awareness of the fact that there is a absolutely real, unseen, hidden, non-visible realm interacting with us in every second of our life, um, you know, I also had to give myself like a permission to really, really engage and start to fight back and to, you know, generate my empowerment. And I don't know, maybe that was a more, maybe I just said the same thing you did in a different way. Oh, that's great. I don't know. But yeah. I, I did the same. Um, uh, in the beginning, I was like more fighting things because I was actually seeing, well, I, I see things that come to me and when I close my eyes and it's like, bring up negative faces that try to scare and like mm -hmm. pro uh, projections of fear and like uh, overwhelm and like all this kind of stuff like oh yeah the, this isn't me whatever uh, anything external to you in your bubble of reality if it wants to interact in your bubble of reality it has to has your energy authority or somehow be in the bubble of reality or whatever and you f somehow be able to force it out retake your power um, get it out of its hands and then it will lose all effect and power over you releasing the emotions are very powerful because they have a big immunity effect they also go into transmutation of empowerment but um, they it, every time you do something about it, either letting go or transmuting or whatever uh, it it propels you crazy strong past any predictive model against you and it, it means a lot of things like any, if anything's influencing you through remote viewing, uh, sonically or whatever, AI, whatever, um, it will have something you can track back in source and it will, uh, uh, attach to something in your field. You can find what it attaches to and find the core of it, which is you and give it what it needs to transmute to where it's no longer a signature match to anything being able to touch it, which is the negative frequencies and emotions. And they'll find how they're flowing throughout the body. Learn about that, like incorporate color, test things. It's your training course, your body. You can make different ways of doing this. I used to just like fight things and like um, 
you know, I would sonic punch things from a distance and like uh, get out swords and like go crazy on big predator uh, predators. And now I'm like, okay, I trained that uh, now. I, and then I started moving on to like all these different scenarios and I eventually learned how to do it in stillness and turn it into a peaceful punch. And then like, oh, this love thing really works. And then uh, like, just like trying to, cause it, you can, you can merge it with everything. You can merge love with even the opposites of itself. Like um, some things don't respond, like even the the most dark things don't fully respond to love entirely, but they will if you combine love with fear and you, re you transmute the fear within their body and bring it to where it kind of like does this state where it will either allow them to uh, eventually turn on love or if they're depends on the situation that you're trying to do but right. um reverse your purpose probably. yeah yeah because like if you're wanting stuff to like no means no stop coming after me there's like you have the right you have the sovereign natural light authority to protect your space your sovereignty from things invading it and depending on how much fo force you put into it eventually if something doesn't say no uh it doesn't react to the things you say you have the the right to put up the big guns, yeah. um, especially if something's trying to kill you, which like, or like uh, influence stop the heart or all this. Get you to kill stuff. yourself. <laughs> you know? Each one of the transmutations, as you, you become these challenges, you become immune to it. And the next time it has to do, it has to do something even more stronger and eventually it has to waste more and more energy. And then it starts exposing and using up all the energy it stole from you. And eventually it has no more. And then it narrows down the things that have that as you're claiming and making yourself fully whole to where nothing can influence and affect you. And you have this field of a keto like energy projection and reflection and bringing situations to peace for everything that interacts with you, light, dark, neutral, and the, the monkey wrench that wants to get in uh, to the, to cause trouble in the, those three uh, light, dark, neutral systems. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm just gonna go uh, ahead and check question. our uh, our questions here real quick, and we are gonna we are gonna roll out in a few minutes, you guys. It is almost five o'clock here on the west coast of the United States. So if you have any other comments, I know we kind of skipped over a bunch of stuff in the chat, you guys. We've been just kind of rambling a lot here, um, but yeah, thank you for thank you for hanging out, everybody. Hello, hello. Thank you, Catherine. Totally. Um, yeah, Sean, tell us about your website and the work that you're doing. How can how can people get a hold of you? What kind of sessions are you doing? How does that all work? Sure, and I'd love you if you drop the your information as well. Uh, oh, yeah. And yes. so my website is sonically.com. I'm also on YouTube and Facebook and uh, Instagram and some other things. A uh, quantum businessman. Uh, site and I'm also going to be doing a thing for the IMEC International Mandela Effect Conference uh, doing a presentation on lucidity in this dream how to quantum jump and I'm like laying out the entire uh, to do list on quantum jumping for free for people if they want to tune into that um, it's like imec.world or something I'm I'll, I'll put up the link with the video. Yeah, please do put that in there. I, I'm actually very curious about that. Huh. Yeah, and all, like as an example, Mandel effects, like the rips in uh, like the reality, not really rips, but like, oh, there's like a seam. Oh, I'm looking past the veil concept for timeline merging and collapsing and uh, switching of like what in the editor's um, perspective makes the best possible timeline. As an example, Earth would love it if people quantum jumped, and you can you can quantum jump all the time through different activities. We do it naturally. It kind of like something that just builds up eventually, but you can get to the point where you can do it like an instant kind of thing um, through meditation, ceremony, uh, healing yourself, big big changes in yourself, emotion, mind, uh, dream, spirit, all the other thing. Um, sensual, sexual, uh, yoga, you can do it all kinds of different ways in a ceremony. And if you can Mandela effect awakening, like 
there's this concept of if you were to see all these timelines as plants in a garden and earth like cultivates timelines like oh i want a timeline where that person focused on that skill and then came up with something that nobody else would have came up with and that and all these different scenarios to learn and process grow and have that awareness come back to the original timeline eventually after it's uh flowered all the way and then are remerging and like uh like all that data um, and sometimes they switch and actually cause physical changes that people observe. Some people remember mm -hmm. other things and uh, it kind of goes nice. They're not saying everything in that is, but there's like thousands of examples and millions of people that experience the same thing. So it's not all misremembering, oh, but uh, thank you. like you can help people that if you're training in the mystery school for how to do Mandela effects yourself, you can go down finding the mandela effects go through each of those schools of the beings that cause those such as earth or her time influencers and uh like earth is cultivating timelines where a bunch of people that wouldn't have woke up on this timeline woke up you can give them what they need on those timelines and this timeline what they both need to be able to where they eventually merge and mm. that will will like have all that person's consciousness merge with the person on this timeline and they will start thinking differently will start acting differently and waking up and i'll add to the full spectrum which is that's part of the process i went through as well just that that whole like almost like a walk-in process it sounds like you're talking about in a weird way as well uh, should... that's another way yeah uh, so that that's psionic league Dot com for those of you guys that want to follow up with Sean and like if you guys are hearing this and you're wondering like what is this guy doing what does this work like I've experienced a session with Sean and um, honestly I, I, I think it's a very very fascinating and illuminating process that I went through and I truly truly do like recommend that people if you are interested in what we're talking about here today try it um, I had a, a very very interesting experience and I think it's important like to mention that as a person that also does this work um, and I know there's other people watching as well, but like, I am not the only one doing this. I, there is a whole literal multi-dimensional soul group of individuals that are activating and practicing and literally creating these programs or, you know, how to like quantum jump, how to switch timelines, how to activate your own multi-dimensional intuitive abilities. You guys, we are past the stage in our lifetime in which those are things of science fiction. They stopped being a story a few years ago. Actually, they never were, but we're coming to the stage in which we are now able to perceive and use and work with these energies. And so Sean is a really, really cool example of that. He's, he was a really, really big part of my journey, but um, as well also, and I will just mention one other thing. Um, for those of you guys that are interested, I also have um, what we would call a school of multidimensional intuition. And I will also drop that in the chat as well. Uh, for those of you guys that are interested, what is that? That is a multidimensional training program that I'm putting on uh, through the workshops that I've done over the past year or so. Um, and what we did is we edited them all together and have actually created a training program that people can purchase and take part in online, as well as many other things. But today's the first day that we've been able to make that live. So I'm dropping that in the chat. Um, but yeah, you guys can also reach me at rememberyourmission.com. But all that said, Sean, is there anything else you want to say before we bounce out of here um i mean there's so much but like yeah if, if you're you uh got all your stuff out there um uh i love you all thank you so much for being here and being part of this game and this dream and what makes things happen so thank you so much for listening with your time because so many that so much bravery right there and like I can imagine what you all become and it's so needed. So thank you for being here on this planet. I'd, I'd be, it would be way less bright without you. And again, you, you have the ability to do all this stuff. And especially if you want to go into that space, if you make that, that switch and knob and a sacred activity to going into empowerment of yourself to a level that reflects the external, you can make a change like uh, some quick things if you want to um, activate and awaken things on the planet more. There is a thing, um, I'm in Europe, uh, uh, Asia right now on this map, but uh, there's a volcano in Mexico, uh, wait, Guatemala, called Pac, 
Aya. Um, Pacquiao, it's like near, right, right near Guatemala, hmm. kind of like um, a little south of it. And that one has the ability to awaken a whole bunch of people. Uh, so you can uh, ask your higher self to send your dreaming astral energetic self in a safe way uh, that interacts with it message wise, you know, like, don't do anything you would you, st safety steps to where you can be part of a collective to bring the energy it needed to awaken a big, like, you're not like, it's not an attempt to make the volcano go off though. If it goes off, that will also mean something big. Um, it's like, it has a generator in it mm -hmm. for awakening energy. And it also has a cannon on it that will then like go and awaken people uh, all around the planet once it's activated. So if it, enough people do that, it will. And then there's a geyser in Colorado. I think it's geyser Springs. Um, mm -hmm. There's a geyser there that also does the same thing in its form with water technology. So if you can work with those two to where they're in capacitance to create a bunch of awakening and energy and be able to fire it more and be fully protected, then that will help the timeline quite a bit strongly oh. and you can keep trading with it. It'll, it'll trade you things it's good at. It'll teach you how to awaken people, eminence from your body, like just wherever you go but it'll, it'll probably ask for like healings and wounds. It's mostly sustained wound. Oh, the one in North America, Colorado, most of its wounds are when white man came and there was like a bunch of dream haunting invasion energy that came with them. Hmm. Um, and then the one, yeah, same, same for the, the yeah. volcano, just in the South America. Expression. What was the volcano called? Cause this is actually incredibly fascinating. How can we, I'll put in the chat. Yeah, no, please, please. Um, God, I'm very, 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 very interested in that. I appreciate you mentioning that. Um, I, in, interesting. Would this, would this also correspond with, I think a thing that you and I were talking about a few weeks ago with respect to kind of pieces of actual existing physical technology or possibly crystalline in nature that are actually vibrating or beginning to kind of activate as a link, like within our consciousness, almost like pieces of ourself that exist as sort of crystals or like tech technology that are kind of buried um it feels as if also based on what like you were saying those are activating on a greater level would this be kind of like related to what you're talking about with like the geyser and uh, the pyramid yes absolutely and that that's like a chess move that those that are able to do that and then the grid working goes along with that and the discovery but yeah if you know the technology like each one of these elementals Everything on the periodic table to the right person can be seen as in a very advanced supercomputer that connects to that entire bandwidth of consciousness and energy stream throughout the multiverse. Um, and there's lim the limitations are mostly based on the person and the acceptance of the elementals that are presented before them in their access to that. And then coming into unity and working with that more opens it up even more. Same as a fire, if you were to do fire shamanism or mm -hmm. being a sacred bath and start like realizing the water around you is like this advanced holographic computer that uh can build up light and like amplify the sh crap out of everything you do um same with every one of these elemental things and they're good at different stuff and based on the spirit that's coming in to be that expression that holds up that space for many other um, beings fractally within it and that's cool that you use those words because technically you can find everything on this planet even like some random crystal uh, seed or a volcano somewhere, having some fractal aspect cellularly and a, a representation as above, so below in your uh, physical body that represents like how each is doing. Um, and like you can pinpoint that within yourself and uh, not have to leave your house, but like have yeah. a massive yeah. effect on yourself and them. <laughs> Water has been incredibly helpful for me in that sense. It's funny that you mentioned that because one of the one of like the primary like places where I receive some form of an expanded frequency or whatever is nearly always either shower, bath, water related. I, I've actually been trying on some level in a like a bit of a different way, either programming or allowing a different level of energetic interaction 
with what I believe to be sort of like a disk drive quality that like water has it like it's like recording ability but um so yeah that 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 makes a tremendous amount of sense thank you for sharing all this stuff with us i know we've been hanging out here for a while there's a lot of people in the chat here as well i appreciate everybody that has been here and we will probably do this again you guys oh cool you got the names in there awesome um yeah you guys please do continue to reach out to sean at psionic league and me as well if you have any questions at rememberyourmission.com we have our links in the chat and uh, yeah, thank you everybody for hanging out. Um, I think if there's anything you need to know at this stage of the game is that you are in total like control of your, you know, this 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 realm, this whole world that we're living in. And at this stage, I mean, it really, it takes sovereign awareness, you know, without fear, without hypervigilance. And I have a feeling you guys come June, and actually it can literally happen right now, but we are in the process of resetting our like collective timeline on such a huge, huge level that I think, you know, like these sort of talks and these sort of, you know, just like open-ended, you know, like discussions are some of the coolest things that we can do at this stage. So anyway, thank you for hanging out, man. I totally appreciate thank you. you, man. This has been fun. We'll, we'll have to do it more. This is, I don't get to go into that much uh, subjects with yeah. um, other people. So really yeah, good uh, post you got a yeah. skill going on. Cool. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and close it here. Thank you everybody for hanging out. And hopefully we'll do this again in the near future. I love you guys. Stay out of trouble. All right. Um, and yeah, I think we just closed our live stream. I'm gonna close this as well. And yeah, thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate you. Yeah, that was great, man. You did a great job. Yeah, and we'll have to do this again. We'll see what's going on. Uh, so if we're recording all that, uh, uh, I guess. Uh, or if you're going to put it up, whatever, uh, go for it and I'll, I'll make a copy and then I'll put and it on. I will also channel. send it to you as well. I'll send you the, like the recording link after this. Feel free to upload it as well. And Thanks. yeah, we will, we will talk in the future, my friend. All right. Sweet. Have a wonderful day. Love you too. Brother. Good night, man.